the thing that came out of of this show that everyone kept talking about was Starcade '97. I know everyone's talked about it to death. I do a show with Kevin Sullivan. Of course, you were on it about a year ago or so. You were on it with us. We we talked a little bit about it. But I feel like that's one of the things where I always thought about. How come we didn't just pretend? Because Sting kind of gets his shoulder. How come we didn't pretend Sting kicked out? And Kevin had no answer for it either. I know that's like a like oh they could have done that instead of the fast count. I always thought about that, and no one ever talks about it. like just pretend Sting kicked out and maybe go that direction. Was that ever brought up as far as Star no Wars? no? And that's a really good point. And you know that would have worked really effectively. Um, but the reality in the in the situation in the moment when it was actually happening. Everything that happened in the last 60 seconds before that finish was completely surprising to everyone. You know, obviously, according to Sting in the ring, um, the referee was confused. Obviously, Nick Patrick, uh, he was being pulled in different directions. I certainly had what I thought was the finish going into that. And it caught everybody by surprise. And we had to deal with it in the moment, right? We had to make a decision literally overnight. And I don't think we made the best decision, right? We, we made the decision that we made, obviously, and we ended up kind of regrouping for February, I think it was. But, uh, man, uh, in that moment, there would have probably been three or four better ways to get out of that. And we probably left two or three of them on the table. I said this to uh, Sullivan, and I know Conrad has brought this up too. I feel like in my head, and I, me and Conrad are probably right about the same age too, so probably maybe the same thought process fan-wise, thinking about it, like, shouldn't Nick Patrick have been fired for that? Like, the, I always think that, like, why wasn't he fired? He he screwed up, you know? But I don't well, think he maybe No, but he didn't. Fan. As far as the fan in the audience and watching on television, Patrick didn't screw up. That three count was a three count. Now, we internally may have felt that way. Or somebody may have felt that way. But um, as far as what was presented on TV, which is what I was really the most concerned with, it, it wasn't an obvious. In fact, if it would have been obvious that Patrick screwed up, it would have made the storyline and the finish a whole lot easier. Interesting. Now, I, I feel like everyone always kind of skirts around it. Was Sting like in the best shape he could have been at that point. I know the joke was he's not tan and stuff, but like, was he in like the right frame of mind? Was he in the best shape at that point? Like, what did you think about Sting at that point? You know, and this is probably one of the reasons why I continue to take as much heat as I'm, I take for this is th there were certain, there were certain things going on in that moment that are personal and it's not up to me to talk about them. And until somebody else does, I'm just going to, kind of ride the ride the edges of that explanation as best I can. It, it, look, ultimately, it was Hulk Hogan's decision. Hulk Hogan had creative control. And it's interesting that I read a couple headlines shortly after that A&E special came out. Eric Bischoff finally admits Hulk Hogan exercised creative control. That's not true. It may be the first time that the light bulb went off in that writer's head, but... I've explained it pretty thoroughly for a number of years where we went into that finished meeting, um, planning on one thing that we've been planning on for a year and a half. And then when, during the course of that meeting, certain people felt uncomfortable. And I refer to, you know, Sting's tan, I think in general, uh, I think it's safe to say mindset. You know, where was everybody's heads at going into that meeting? And that's part of it, folks. You know, scripting, planning, executing, wrestling is just that. It's scripted. It's, it's not real. And in order to execute a really great storyline and a really good finish, great finish, Everybody's head has to be in the in the game and on the same page, and if that's not the case, you ad you adjust. And Hulk wasn't feeling it. Simple as that. He just didn't feel it. He he wasn't feeling it. I'm not going to go into detail why. But once Hulk made that decision, now I'm faced with the choice of either getting in a head to head with Hulk Hogan, who ultimately had creative control. That was one way I could have reacted. 
The other way I could have reacted was to try to negotiate. And when I say negotiate, I mean compromise, get everybody else to compromise. Okay, we don't feel exactly that, but how about if we do it this way, right? Um, I attempted that. And it could have worked and probably would have worked if we would have had a day or two to discuss and think through and just be honest with everybody involved might probably have been a, not might, it probably would have been a, a better outcome. Uh, or I could just go with it. I attempted, you know, to, to start a conversation and, and try to ne negotiate, you know, the finish that we really wanted, but there wasn't time. There just wasn't time. And I know people listening will go, what do you mean there wasn't time? It was three hours before, whatever it was. But yeah, you're talking about to get to that point, you're talking about a two and a half, three hours of conversation. And when you finally do make a decision, and we were already up against this wall, you've got to communicate that decision to a lot of people. And while the show is going on, I've got to have a, a production meeting with my director while he's calling the live shoot. You know what I mean? Yep. There, there were a lot of things that a lot of things have to happen when you make a, 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 a big decision um, about a finish. If you want to cover it correctly, your announcers have to have an idea of what's going on and at least have an idea of, you know, the direction to play it. Your director, as I mentioned, your cameramen have to be made aware, you know, there's a lot of things that have to happen. It's not just, oh, I'm going to tell Sting, Sting's going to tell Hogan, and then we're going to go out and do it. I wish it was that easy.